Okay, I'll tell you. Um, one of the first things, you know, I think a, a big job as management is to kind of. Oh, oh thanks. Um, is to is to look out into the future and see what is coming, and then guide our agents in the right direction and and. Facebook, social media, social media marketing, that was the big thing, and it still is the big thing, and people don't know what to do. So what we did was put together a group, we call them Lab Rats. We got about 15 people from around the company. I met with them every Tuesday with our marketing director, and we started working on what would work on Facebook, what would work on LinkedIn, and, and you know, basically with agents, you, you gotta get them to crawl first, and then walk, and then run. And so we, we did a lot with Facebook, and we've, I've got a photo. Um, if you look in this picture, you'll see there's me, and then that's Sherry Chris, and she's filming the, uh, the band last night. So I, I asked Monica, our photographer here, to take a picture. I'm going to put it on Facebook, and I'm going to tag me and tag Sherry Chris, and she's super on Facebook, so she's got like a million people. So they'll know I was here at Quantum at this great conference, and, uh, and it'll be all, all of her friends will now know about me. So anyway, I'm, well, that's how we're using social media, just get it out there. And so anyway, I was trying to do it. I don't know if you saw. My wife thinks I was at a church. <laughs> <laughs> I, I tried to, Sherry, I don't know if you saw her. She was sitting in the front row. She took like two movies and then she kept putting her camera down and, and so finally I was like oh I got to get a picture so I ran back and I got Monica and I said Monica here you stand here and you take a picture of me taking a picture of Sherry taking a picture of the band and so we're waiting and waiting and Monica's like what's and I said Sherry can't stop herself she's gonna film that band again in just a second finally Monica said well you just go ask her so I went and I asked her and she didn't know what we were doing but it's actually in your program of those great photos that uh, that Quantum put together for us so you have a, a souvenir to go home to remind you. Social media is a big thing. I think you really need to guide your agents because they don't know where and they're getting help from somewhere and they're doing it wrong. They're putting listings up there. They're doing direct selling. They're, they're linking uh, YouTube videos of their house right on their Facebook page and people are unfriending them. Uh, they don't even know it, but, uh, but that, that's happening. So guide your agents correctly and that's what one of the things we did. The other big change that we saw was GPS enabled searches. It's going to become a big thing. And uh, we, we hooked up with, uh, with Quickly, with Tony Romeo in the back, and um, started with them because it's a texting thing, too, where you text a word, a keyword, to 59559. If you say that number like 10 times, you will never be able to forget it, 59559. Actually, I only just recently learned it's actually Quickly. If you have one of those old touch-tone phones, it'll work. But anyway, what we did was we picked as a keyword instead of champion, it's too long, and we we're trying to think of a short word and info and price was all gone. So we picked the second most frequently texted word on the planet. The number one is LOL, which really, if you think about it, LOL is kind of stupid because us boomers, we had a short word that meant laugh. It was ha ha, but no, they went to LOL, which doesn't make any sense. But anyway, we picked OMG because, you know, that's, oh my gosh, that is the second most frequently texted word. So you text OMG to 59559, you get all of our listing inventory. And we'll go ahead and show you a, a cable TV commercial. We love cable TV because it's cheap. You can get right on house and garden TV and you, you can spend, uh, you can get a lot of penetration for a, a very small amount of money with cable. So, an amazing thing happened the other day. I saw the perfect home for sale. The sign said text OMG to 59559 for more info. I grabbed my phone. Champion texts back the price, information, and pictures for the five closest listings. Thanks, Champion Realty, for understanding how I do real estate. I'm John Coyle. You can use our OMG system for price and information on any listing from any broker. It's an exclusive service from Champion Realty.
So the, the first 30 seconds was mine. The other uh, minute and a half was Tony's, and he was laughing in the back because I, I had my... Uh, you, you can hire these guys really cheap. They're right out of high school. They've gone to college for one semester, didn't work out. They've got thousands of hours of video editing time for YouTube. And so I had him post uh, OMG over whatever the keyword Tony was using in his commercial. But anyway, this thing has been great for us. We got big signs printed that say text OMG to 59559 for price and info on any listing, any broker. Then it also had a champion on there and it said for sale. And we put them at the entrance to every major subdivision in, in our county and and in our state where we have offices and people are, are using it. Whether it gets us a ton of leads or not, that's not the point, but, but people, um, our agents love that we had a first mover advantage. I know Long and Foster's in the crowd. I will say that they have the system too. It's never about the idea. It's always about the execution and you execute hard and fast for a period of time and, and then you move on to the next thing and keep the competition guessing. I will say one thing about QR codes, and we just rolled out QR codes this last week to our agents. I asked a crowd of pretty tech savvy people. I mean, not, you know, about as tech savvy as your average realtor. I asked how many people know about QR codes? And out of 200 people, there were less than five hands. They don't know anything about QR codes. So in the land of the blind, the one-eyed man is king. And I think we can have a non-sustainable competitive advantage by getting out there hard and fast and saying, QR codes are the bomb. If you don't have QR codes, you're not going to sell your house. And so we're, we have realized that in Anne Arundel County and uh, the Eastern Shore, which is our market, that's Annapolis and the Eastern Shore, that there are a number of agents who have taken houses off the market and they're withdrawn from the MLS because they're trying to let the, the uh, days on market counter reset. Then they're going to put it back on on the 91st day and get going. Well, while they're withdrawn, it is, it, it is not listed. And therefore, it is totally ethical to contact these people and tell them what we would do for them. So we came up with a champion housing report, which, by the way, looks like a million bucks thanks to Quantum because they do. Whenever we have an idea, we get Quantum to print it for us. And it just looks better because of the professionalism of their product. But we came up with the champion housing report, which is the market forecast. I have four positive things and one negative thing. So, you know, you don't want to say it's all going to be rosy because then they don't believe you after a while. Uh, and then the 10 things you must do to sell your property in, in 2011, seven of which are exclusive to champion. And the three, you know, are, are just some great ideas. And we and one of them is if you don't have OMG codes, you're you're done. And so we're giving this to all these uh, withdrawn listings from other brokers and they're calling up their agent. What's what is a what is a QR code anyway? And do the agents know they have no clue. So I think you've got about a quarter, uh, about three more months to to really go beat the drum on QR codes and get a, a little bit of a, a lift for it. Also, it makes your agents think you're brilliant because you're bringing them something uh, that that they can't get anywhere else or that they feel that you're on top of the, the game there. Um, one other thing I, I wanted to address that the last panel uh, talked about, and, and I thought OB was on the money when he said you basically, you know, you got to give them a hug. They just want a hug. They just want to be told it's going to be OK. You want to do things to build your culture and build your team tighter. It was actually back in the last recession of the early 90s when we stopped doing company trips. They just got hideously expensive and whatever. So we stopped for long enough so that they forgot about them. And then we, we came back with company trips. But these are not paid for by the company. They're, they're fully paid for by the people who go, the agents, the managers, whatever. I personally write a check. Unfortunately, my wife likes to take her three best friends, so I write a check for five people. But we go to the Caribbean to an all-inclusive resort, and uh, Quantum prints a beautiful brochure. We get about 25% of our agents who go, and uh, we figure that if they like each other so much that they want a vacation together, we should facilitate that, and we get a great group price by going in with a lot of people. And we've targeted it to the one week we think we can go, which is the week right after Thanksgiving. And uh, it doesn't kill our business because that's a kind of a slow week anyway. And it's right after hurricane season ends in the Caribbean and just before the rates go up on December 15th. So we get great rates at these all-inclusive resorts. So doing those kind of programs, are, it gives agents something to look forward to. We allow them to spread the cost out of over 10 months. They just take a little bit out of each commission to pay for it. It also uh, kind of binds them to you while they're, you know, we've got a bunch of their money sitting there waiting for the December trip. So it's another little thing that we do uh, to, uh, to make them feel, you know, champion and uh, like they're a champion and, and be with us. But that's about it on uh, technology.
I gotta tell you, I'm sitting there getting very nervous. I need a minute. Frederick spoke about 29 minutes ago. I got 60 seconds to get back to my lead. <laughs> I wish I was getting leads. So I gotta use your service more. So now I have to tell you, a lot of people are feeling pain in the industry and that creates just awesome opportunity and it leads to creative thinking. And this event for, for a lot of people here has been, I think, very validating and very exciting. It certainly is for us. And um, we're very big believers that this ocean of data that's out there is leading to tremendous opportunity. Hold on. So, yeah. Listen, I come from Diane Turton country, New Jersey, so I know how to, you know, work the camera. So there was a lot of data and there's some very intelligent people that I've quoted. We need to unlock uh, value from the data we have. Exact quote from yesterday, early, correct? Hyperlocal info is what consumers want to have provided. Sherry Chris, she said that in this room yesterday. Data analytics are huge. Pam O'Connor, she said that quote unquote in this room yesterday. And I have to go with that one because I'm in leading RE and when, you know, Pam goes like this, I go like this. <laughs> She's been very good for her business. So Brad Yeager, I'm very impressed with Brad uh, from Ebby. He said data mining's the future and he said he's the youngest guy in the room. He's also the guy I'm listening to the most in the room because we all need you know, I used to be the young lion, I'm just the old guy. So we need to uh, think about that. So what we're doing at our company is we're really using data effectively to drive revenue in many aspects of our business. And unlocking the uh, insight from the numbers isn't so easy. I'm glad it's not so easy. If it was easy, everyone could do it. So I like the concept of showing the x-ray glasses here. We want every edge, and data gives an edge way beyond what I think many people in real estate actually know. Ford was in bankruptcy, one of the greatest turn, turnarounds in corporate America. One of the key things that they attribute their turnaround to is analytics understanding consumer behavior better and adapting based on numbers, based on data. We actually can use numbers like Fortune 500 companies. Now let me show you a little bit of what we do. And whenever you talk data and analytics, first thing that people say is, oh, you're talking about average price and days on the market. No, yes, but no, way beyond that. And the way that we're using, I'll talk about it in a moment also. So most things I'll blow up so you'll see very well. But that's months one through six. And every realtor always explains to people that property sell best in the first month. Don't overprice it because values drop over time and you get your best offers first. Then in fact, what this is showing you is that in Livingston, New Jersey, um, it's, it's incredible, but one out of four properties are selling in, uh, or in the first month. What we're also showing on the second line here is the percentage of original list price. So properties that sell in the first month are selling at 99% of list price on average. Now, if you go to the six month out, only one out of 17 properties sell. One out of four in the first, one out of 17 in the six month. Where do you wanna be? Now at the percentage of list price, do you want to sell at 99% of list price or 85% of list price and have six months of pain of people coming through your house and cleaning up? People say, I don't want to underprice. You're pushing me hard to underprice it to sell it in the first month. It's impossible to underprice and I'll prove it. Of the one out of four properties that sell in the first month in Livingston, 34% you'll see in the bottom row have a bidding war, meaning if you put it under the market, the market will actually recognize it and it'll get bid over. You'll notice by the fourth month, there is no such thing as a bidding war. So pricing right, and this actually helps us with right pricing. And you know what? 
Yesterday we had a, a situation where we had listed a property in Maplewood. It was listed with another broker. It expired. Our agent used this. They took a $60,000 price adjustment. And as a result, I got a call from our manager. It sold in 72 hours. It had been $60,000 more, one showing in six months. And the listing agent had never asked for a price adjustment. So we came in, we used the data, and we have a very happy agent and a very happy owner and a very happy me because the woman actually happens to work where my kids go to uh, school. So now what we're showing here, and I'll give you a little bit of a, of a blow up, is we're also looking by price slicing, and for any community we'll break it down, but what we'll see is this. In the town of Livingston, between a million and a million two, 70% of the properties sell. So that's our hottest price range. Between 800,000 and a million, 34% sell. I would say you have to do more to sell a house in the 800 to million dollar range, would you agree? So I actually want the million to the million two range. The funny thing is, we make assumptions about data, but we're wrong. Somebody you, that you know, you're with them and is looking for their wallet on 18th Street. Then you say, why are you looking on 18th Street? You lost it on 20th Street. He says, well, you know, the light's better on 18th Street. You're not going to find the wallet. People are target marketing, looking at the wrong target. So in Livingston, people think the hottest price range is just under a million, yet it's just over a million. And now look at the difference also in terms of the, you get the highest volume on the bottom line almost double the volume of the other uh, price segments, and they sell at 92% of list price to sales price ratio, and they're selling at 80 days. So by understanding the market, we're knowing where to market. This is a community where it was painted with a very broad brush that values dropped 6% last year in the, whole com in the whole town. But we've noticed in two neighborhoods, the values are actually rising. Now, if there's a home in that neighborhood, Greenview, and the values are rising, I have something very compelling to talk to the owner about because they've been beat up by lots of people. If they're in Clarkstown that dropped 15%, I've got something very compelling to explain to them also, but it's very, very important to have these numbers to truly educate people. All I'm hearing here is people want hyper-local info, so we figured out a way to, to give it to them. It is critical, and the results we're getting from the consumers is amazing. In fact, we have a, a local magazine. They deliver 50,000 copies every month to 12 communities. We just made a deal with them where we're providing them a full page of analytics. And we're also going to have a full page ad. The analytics will drive back to a site that we're creating to give them more deep dive detail about it. And they're going to be, they're very excited about it. Got a fantastic opportunity as a result. Then we break down by elementary school, by neighborhood, by development, by condominium, and you learn things. In the town of Livingston, two uh, very prominent condominiums. One is a Regency Club and the other is The Point. And realtors are spending just as much money to take listings in The Point as they are in the Regency Club. And they really beat themselves up for it. But now when I look at the numbers, Regency sells at 96% of list price in 54 days, The Point selling in 145 days. The success rate at the Regency Club is 58%. Twice as many sell there. By knowing that, I can tell you where I want my people spending their money marketing and where I'm going to let, you know, Marty's team take the listings. <laughs> Thank you. You're welcome. Except he'll have none of that. He's going to crush us there, I know. But I'm going to try. So now, we're using the numbers to determine where to market and what to communicate. And we're combining with the media. The media got very excited about this stuff. And they like that we're having novel looks at numbers. Um, for right pricing, for negotiating, for our listing presentations, it's incredibly powerful when you come with numbers. Um, it's interesting. We have a client in common. Chip Newman sold a property for a gentleman. We came into his property. We listed it for a million five. And he said, are you going to give us a Chip Newman-like experience? He was amazing. And I said, actually, no, he's better. But 
We actually said that he thought that was funny enough to sign the listing. No one else here thought it was funny, but it was actually pretty good. <laughs> so um, anyway, what got the listing was we were able to show him why, not just sort of hyperbole. We're also using it for recruiting and retaining. And we're making the analytics convenient for our associates because we make the numbers available mobile as well as on the PC. So we've created something called the JB Advantage. You can put in any address in the marketplace and it's gonna give, of course, showing information instantly, but it's also gonna give by the community, by the neighborhood, by the price segment, as the town as a whole, what's going on, and it has a CRM built in also. It also ties to agents' business plans, which I'm not talking about, but we've totally taken a new look at business plans. Um, we're using it for coaching the analytics. The key to coaching is understanding. I've never seen anyone else rank quite like this. We're looking at agents' negotiating skills. So we have one agent, when they represent a seller, they get 98% of list price when they represent a seller. When they work with a buyer, the buyer pays 91% of list price. If you were selling, you'd want that person on both sides, correct? Now, there's another agent, when they list a property, they get 89% of the list price on average. When they represent a buyer, the buyer pays 95%. So I was actually talking to one of our associates about this person, they said, you know what's funny? Whenever there's a deal, they're just pushing the deal, pushing the deal, they're, they're too scared to negotiate. It's like, you know, if you don't, don't you know, rock the boat, take the deal, or everything's going to fall apart. As opposed to, the first agent has some savvy and moxie. Now, it gives us the ability to truly coach and take our time. It also gives us the ability to explain in the marketplace why one agent might be better than another. Just giving you a little glimpses of how we look at it. Now we're breaking down production by elementary school district and neighborhood and everything else. So, as an example, this was a case where we had a conversation, gave a phone call to an agent who, on certain categories, ranks you know, very high uh, in the town, but never the top. But here's the interesting thing. This agent has the highest list price to sales price ratio, getting 63% of the listing sold. The number one agent, who's number one in a number of the segments, gets 25% sold, 33%, 30% sold, but a blended average of like 32% of the listing sold, but this is a person everyone lists with. We spoke to the number three producer and said, you know, you're twice as good. You actually sell more than anybody else. You have the, not, in, in, or, or not you don't sell more than anybody else, but anybody who lists with you has the best chance of a successful transaction. And, we're actually gonna bring this person into the company. It's very, very interesting. It's very meaningful. So sometimes the number three producer, as it seems, is actually the number one producer. And by breaking it down by neighborhood or by development, you have a lot more opportunities to market people in many ways. I don't want the Livingston top producer. I want the Riker Hill top producer. I want the Collins top producer. I want the hyper local top producer. Does this make sense to anybody? Thank God, because I'm killing myself doing it. So, so I have to tell you, analytics are absolutely giving us an edge. You know, I, I stand here humble because there's a lot of companies bigger than ours in this room. But I'm hoping, and I think, you know, the analytics are, are really going to help. So I want to thank everyone, and particularly I want to thank Quantum Digital, unbelievably awe-inspiring awe -inspiring company an incredible organization. If you know, we can emulate what they do here, it's amazing. Thank you. All right, I guess I'm last. But uh, I'm not gonna do a softball. It's actually, I, I think, something of importance to all of us. And uh, there's been a lot of talk um, yesterday, today, about technology and agents, about um, our challenges, our struggles. Um, and I wanted to just share a little bit of information with you about um, how we, I think we need to um, take ownership of this situation a little bit. 
Um, I don't need to go through this uh, bullet by bullet, but I mean, we've got some, some definite challenges out there. We've got issues of, of our customer base is younger than our agent base and how they're communicating is different. We've got the rapid acceleration of technology. If you look at things like mobile and social media that have just exploded in the last year or two, you know, we're all playing catch up with, every, with the web, nevertheless, all the emerging technologies. Um, frankly, there's too many choices. How many of you went to NAR this last year and walked through the trade show and there's like 29 of everything? And we're confused. You imagine how agents feel. Everybody's telling them, of course, they've got the best thing and why they should use them. And I think they're just overwhelmed. Breaking existing habits, you know, it's hard to change. And if you're used to doing something a, a certain way, to break those habits can be really hard. Um, intimidation factor, I think this is one of the biggest things, is it's, it's an excuse not to want to learn of just saying, you know, uh, I'm afraid of it, and that there's immediate mental barriers put up. And frankly, a big part of it is bad or lack of advice. Is there someone there that's acting as a consultant with them to help them through all this? to understand what should I be using? What shouldn't I be using? What should I stay away from? And where are they getting advice? You know, there's a lot of, you know, uh, you know people out there, ta you know, holding classes on social media and do all these things, but some of them are for the wrong reasons. And do our agents getting help of knowing where they should focus their time and where they shouldn't? So I, I feel for agents, because there's a lot going on here, and, you know, they need our help. And, you know, when you try and equate this into how this impacts our businesses as brokerages, I, I think it's, it's pretty severe. Um, the number one thing is ability to service clients, whether it's to generate business or it's to market our listings or it's to help during the transaction process or add value later. You know, if we're not adopting these systems, um, can we as companies and our agents as a whole do a good job providing service? Um, frankly, it's going to lead to lower productivity. If we can't engage, help our agents engage in increasing their business on the top line and being more efficient on how they manage their business, um, the productivity is not going to be there. Uh, low usage of brokerage tools. Let me ask you all a question. How many of you wish you had a higher usage of your tools in your company? <laughs> Whoever's not putting their hand up, come on, raise it up. <laughs> okay. Uh, here, here's the issue for us as brokerages, right? We're paying a lot of money whether it's to develop our own stuff, whether it's we're paying vendors, whether it's our staff time to develop this stuff, all of these things to promote it, we have a lot invested in our tools. But the reality is if our agents aren't using them, are we really providing value? Or are we just saying we have stuff because the guy across the street has stuff? Where is all that money and time going into where we're spending on all these things? How we get as a company getting return on that investment? I think it's a big issue. Um, if your agents aren't using your tools, that creates a whole host of issues in terms of uh, recruiting uh, and retention. Because, you know, we're, we're in the Arizona market and we have a lot of low fee, you know, I, we call them self-serve competitors. And frankly, if our agents aren't using our tools, they're going to look at us as a commodity with all those other brokerages, and we're not. So uh, how are we providing value to those folks? I think this is an opportunity for us as brokerages to step up to the plate. I don't think we put this off on uh, outside industry trainers and those kind of things. I think we have to stand up, uh, step up to the plate. And we have to take a leadership position and figure out how do we solve this problem because it's only going to get worse. It's only going to get worse because of the rapid advances in technology. And we have to address this. So this is not a promotion for our company, but I did want to share with you kind of our stab at how we try and take a leadership position and how we address some of these issues. Um, we've been struggling with this. You know, we've got, like a lot of you, we have some good stuff, you know. Could our stuff be better? Sure. It could always be better. But we've invested a lot of time and dollars in developing good systems, whether it's consumer uh, front facing or it's agent facing. And uh, we've had some good usage of our tools, some specific tools better than others. But we think we can do a lot better job. The more we roll out, the more we pile onto the problem of low adoption because we just make it even more complex with more tools and systems they gotta try and learn. So we made a decision to kind of take a consultative approach with our agents. And we developed a system last year called Agent Map, which stands for the Marketing Assistance Program. And here's how the conversation went. Uh, and, and it may sound similar for some of you. We spent a lot of time talking about what our managers do. 
Okay. There was a conversation this morning about trying to, uh, you know, are those uh, uh, too many expectations on those roles? Have those roles changed? And uh, we actually listed out in our company, we had a strategic meeting with our leadership team, and we listed out all the things that uh, our agents are doing and all the things we expect them to do. And our expectation up to this point was that our managers were going to be promoting our tools and uh, pr uh, training to them in the offices. And the reality is it wasn't happening. And, that, and we were frustrated with that process that that wasn't happening. But the reality is it was really more our fault because we didn't realize the scope of what they had going on. So we realized that we could probably do a much better job by centralizing this process, taking that responsibility off of them because it's not core to the value they can give to the company. And let us centralize that process and deliver that information and that consultation in a different way. So one of the things we've done is we've actually, uh, we run a, uh, a centralized marketing tech combined department. We have for a couple of years, it's worked very well. Um, but we've always had a lot of the promotion of the tools. We've tried to do some centrally, but it's really been out in the offices with the managers is, was our expectation. So we took the opportunity to actually centralize the promotion and the training and the consultation of those tools and systems. And what we did is we took some staff out of branches and off-branch P&Ls, and we actually created centralized trainer positions and, and consulting positions, but not in a separate training department, actually in the marketing and tech department. So it was a collaborative effort, and we're all part of the same team. And our goal here was to go out and not just train on tools. Our goal was to help our agents redefine uh, uh, really a marketing process or a marketing system for themselves. And uh, how we did this is through some training classes, and I'll walk you through that in a minute, because I think how we do the training is even important than just saying we're going to do training. Uh, we've also done a lot of one-on-one -on -one agent consultations, so agents can schedule, actually schedule a meeting with us, with our team, and come in and sit and talk about their business and where they think the gaps are, where they'd want to learn and implement new things in their marketing plan, and we actually guide them through that process. Um, again, it's all centrally managed. One of the things I like about central managing is we can deliver a really quality experience for our agents. So I don't have to rely on somebody to deliver it that isn't trained and doesn't understand what we're trying to accomplish. By using centralized staff to execute this whole system, uh, we can make sure all the training is done the same way and it's executed the same way and we can measure it. Um, so at the net, this didn't cost us any more money because we took people that we think thought could help us out of branches and put them on our you know, centralized marketing and IT uh, uh, P&L. So the net to the company is we just better use the assets that we have and we're much better organized. Of one of the th important things we did, one of our goals is increase the usage of our tools. And how we did that is not by going out and doing training on our tools, it's going out and training on marketing. And we've embedded our tools into all those classes and into that consultation. So actually, let me kind of walk you through just some samples of, of the process we went through. And again, this may not work for your company, it may. It's that this is kind of our approach that we've taken to take a stab at this thing. We've actually created training tracks. So rather than just a bunch of random classes, we've actually created tracks of classes that are common themed and are progressive. So for instance, we created a track of getting business with your website, which had training sessions on how to enhance their website and add local content, uh, make them, uh, uh, how to promote them and not only market to consumers, but how to market to search engines and make them more SEO friendly. Uh, a whole concept of hub and spoke marketing of how you need to have a website as your home base and then you can go out and promote it. You know, we see a lot of agents just doing a bunch of random things. Do these things work together? Kind of like what Quantum's doing where they're trying to drive web traffic through print. You know, if you've got an overall strategy. Uh, how do you measure your website effectiveness and We've talked about lead conversion. How do you have a good follow-up process and incubate those and turn them into business? We had a track on, you know, even the listing presentation and a buyer presentation. You know, how do you communicate value to those folks? Um, and we're getting ready to roll one out soon. That's marketing yourself, which is really targeted marketing. Some of the things we were talking about this morning are really talking about how do they have different messages for different audiences? What is their marketing messages? Which, frankly, most agents have no idea what their marketing message is. Okay. So we've kind of bundled the training into actual uh, themes and tracks rather than just a bunch of random classes. Our training classes, we've spent a lot of time uh, really diving into how best to train the agents, knowing that we have the fear factor, the intimidation factor, all these things. How do we break through? So what we've done is we do small groups, no more than 15 agents at a time. 
We do um, hands-on, so they're on laptops, okay? We have an instructor and a helper in every class. So we don't have one agent that is having a problem with something slow down the whole class. We have somebody walking around. We've actually taken the training out to the branches. So we don't force everybody to come to a central location. Um, we actually take it out to all of our branches and replicate this training in every single branch. Um, we not only hold it once in every branch, we hold it twice in different weeks so that people can come back if they miss the first one, they have a chance to come back. Uh, we also record all of our sessions. We have some agents that like to go back and view them after. Some people would prefer at nine o'clock at night to be home and learn something. Most of the agents like the live approach. I'll tell you what's worked really well with the live approach. The way we've structured the content of the classes, it's hands-on, we're actually accomplishing something together in class. A lot of training classes, you sit there and preach to them, and then you expect them to go away and do something. But the reality is most times that does not work because they get distracted with other things. Well, how many seminars and classes have you guys been to where you hear something and you go back and you don't implement any of it? Okay? We actually implement things in the class. So they're actually updating their website and adding content in the class. We're adding Google, Google Analytics to their site in the class. And some of it's tactical to get them to do stuff, but it's a huge confidence builder for them because they walk out of the class and say, I did it. And it really breaks through that intimidation factor and that icebreaker to get them to actually uh, accomplish something and start to feel confident about it. We spend a tremendous amount of time creating the workbooks and the class content. This is not something we just slap a PowerPoint with and you know the day before and put it together. We actually spend weeks developing the class content as a group with our two trainers and then the rest of our marketing and tech staff hashing through this. You know, these are extremely detailed documents that are step by step by step exactly how to do things, screenshots, the whole nine yards. Um, and they really, that really helps to break through the intimidation issue of technology because we make it easy. We make it easy to use. So we spend a tremendous amount of time on this. One of the things we've done is on our intranet, which frankly in our company is our biggest communication tool. We get more touch points with our agents on our intranet than even our managers do in person. Um, so we actually created a whole portal on our intranet for this agent map class. Um, so we actually created a section where they can go in and we, these tracks or modules, you know, they can go in and see the classes that are available. Uh, we actually have a progress meter. So they can go through and it kind of encourages them if they've taken the two of the four classes to sign up to take the third and fourth class. Um, we actually have, uh, you can see all the volume of classes on here. When we teach a class, we end up teaching it probably 25 different times by doing it in each office and duplicating it and those kind of things. We actually have right on this page, uh, uh, real time, what all the classes are, when they're available, who the instructor is, and they can do one click and enroll right in the class. And we actually track who's enrolled in classes and who's attending classes. We also post the videos, so if they miss a class or want to go back to it, after we've done the classes, we go back and post that and they get the download of the workbooks. This is a really easy interface for them to go in and actually participate in the program, okay? Uh, for the promotion of it, one of the big things in this uh, uh, system is we've changed the role of the manager from the expectation of they're going to do the training to promoting the classes and pr promoting agent, the agent map system. And uh, that's been pretty successful. We've also done some centralized promotion. One of the things we're doing is a lot of peer recommendation. And at the end of this, if we have a minute, I'll show you a, a really quick video. But we're actually getting, as agents are coming out of class, we've got a flip, cam, flip cameras and we're actually getting testimonials for agents talking about their experience. And we're sharing that with the other agents because if they hear it from their peer that it was easy, they're probably more apt to go. Um, so we've done a lot of that and we send out emails on a regular basis promoting the class. But really the agent testimonials and peer recommendations have been really big. Uh, tracking, I'm a big believer in what gets measured gets done. If we just threw this out there and didn't try and track our performance, I don't know that it would be successful as it is. Um, we actually have reporting uh, not only uh, for every class in every office, we're tracking uh, how many agents have enrolled in class, how many have actually attended, how many have watched the video and participated in the program. And we send this out to our managers every single week. And it's a way to uh, keep them engaged in it and also uh, to hold them accountable that, you know, we've had some managers when we first rolled this out that didn't get behind it enough. And our CEO and, and myself, we got on the phone and called some of them and gave them some ideas of how to promote it. But it's, what gets measured gets done. It's a lot of the conversation that happened today. But we're tracking all of it. We're even giving the managers a report for their office by agent, where it actually breaks down by agent. Who's enrolled in what classes and who's attended? 
Because if we're doing a class on how to market your listings, and they know that Mary Smith has 20 listings and hasn't sold any and needs price reductions and, and, and all those kind of things and is looking for other way to market, well, they're going to call up Mary Smith and say, Mary, you really need to come to this class. So we're trying to drill that uh, information down to an individual agent level that the managers can actually do something with it. Uh, one of the things we've done for a little while in our company is we track the usage of all our tools. And some of you may do this in your own way. We have a dashboard report. We actually have a couple. Um, and we uh, produce this every month. It's, it's hard to see here, but we track every, use, uh, every tool. You know, how many hits do we get on our website? How many housing reports are marketing rep uh, market rep update reports are um, created and downloaded by our agents on our intranet every month? How many training videos were watched? How many flyers were created? And we're actually trending this. Um, and it's really our accountability as a company to say, are we doing a good job with usage of our tools? I will tell you, one of the hidden values of this when we first showed it to our managers um, is that they've taken this now and use it, they actually share it with their agents in their sales meetings. And they talk about uh, what tools they should be using, what's the value proposition of these tools. And we're using this on recruiting to show how we hold ourselves accountable to help show the agents how we can improve their business and give them a better experience and more value. So this has actually been a pretty big deal for us. So now you're asking, okay, um, this sounds like a lot of work, and it has been. I would say I have uh, 11 people that work for me in our marketing and tech department. That includes our two trainers. And I will tell you this effort has probably been at least a third of our overall time. Um, but the results have been pretty monumental for our company. Um, part of it is the actual participation and all the classes we've held. We, start, we rolled out our first classes in September. We've had over 1,500 participants at live classes. Um, so we've gotten at every, you know, if we hold a class and we hold it 20 times, we're averaging for each class probably 300 or so, uh, three to 400 agents, depends on the topic. Some are uh, better attended than others. But we're getting uh, a lot of activity on that, and um, it's probably 30, 40% of our agents have participated in the, in the first couple rounds of classes. Um, just those workbooks we have, we hand them out in class, the workbooks. But we've actually had after class and people that didn't attend over 5,000 downloads of our very detailed workbooks of how do you execute against these things and use the tools. We've had a couple hundred views of our videos and we've actually had over 50 one-on-one -on -one requests of agents saying I want to sit down and we spend an hour with them and go through their uh, marketing systems. Increases in tool usage, um, you know, the, the hundreds of agents that have gone through, I'd say the first big thing is um, getting their websites updated. Our first four classes were all about their websites, and we spend a tremendous amount of time on this, and there's a huge difference now in the consumer experience on their websites from what it was prior to what it is now. Um, our listing presentation, we rolled out a new one and made it part of this whole system. We had almost an 80% increase in the usage of our tool from prior to the, uh, to the, the, the rolling out this, this system. Uh, to after. We had over a 50% increase in just sending our sellers activity reports on what's happening on the marketing on their listing and how many hits they have and those kind of things. And we're starting to see some good traction in our actual tool usage. More importantly than the tool usage, I would say, is the paradigm shift in the company. Um, we've really gone to a very high value added proposition to the agents. Um, there's a lot of buzz since we rolled this out. Um, the the biggest change I think is the paradigm shift in agents of their dialogue and what they're doing. A lot of them are no longer afraid. They're no longer afraid to say, uh, well, I, I don't know that stuff. I don't like technology and all those kind of things. They want to listen. They've, we've helped build their confidence. We, the timing was very important when we rolled this out. We rolled this out um, the end of the summer after the tax credit had gone away, if you guys remember that. And the timing worked out really good because our agents had a little bit more bandwidth after all that to actually um, uh, uh, spend time on this. And what it did is it kept them working proactively on their business throughout the winter. Instead of just giving up and saying, well, the market's done, the tax credit's over, um, it really gave them a big confidence boost um, to work through it. So there's been a huge increased perception, real and perceived, of our company tools and the value that we provide through them. Um, We've really, I think, uh, a lot of agents change their habits. They're actually generating business. We have a lot of agents that are generating web leads and doing those kind of things and increasing the traffic that they hadn't done before because they didn't know how or were too scared to do it. 
And um, I actually, uh, we have a real quick one or two minute video I just want to show you. And this is just some testimonials from some of our agents as they walked out of class. And I will tell you, out of this, there's a couple agents on here. A number of these are our, are our top 10 agents in the whole company. So it's not that these are just brand new people. So I don't know if you guys could show that real quick. <laughs> Just to add, in, in just to wrap it up, we uh, know we don't charge extra for it. This is part of the value we provide to our agents. I will tell you one of the side benefits of this, this is a huge recruiting tool for us. Um, I sit for a lot of the top agents that we're trying to recruit, I actually sit down with them as well, and to show our commitment to them of how we have a system they can plug into, because most companies don't do this. Um, it's actually a huge value add on a recruiting standpoint. I, the only thing I would say is, is don't just leave it to somebody else to take ownership of this in your company. I, I would just challenge us all to do something. Um, it may be this, it may be something different, but it, it's becoming a bigger and bigger issue. But uh, frankly, it's an opportunity for us to show value and, and uh, kind of take the bull by the horn. So thank you. question was what percentage of the agents have participated so far. Uh, we've had as high, if you look at an office perspective, we've had some offices that have had over 50% of their agents participate. Uh, on average, I'd say it's probably about 30% uh, participation in our first round, and then we're going to repeat it. So, What is the average age of your agent? Uh, I'd say we're no different than, than uh, the average for the country. I mean, we have some retirement communities. We have some offices that are strictly uh, retirement. So. What's the average age of the people that are doing it? Same. We, it's a good question. We do not have a group of eight. You know, it's not the young tech savvies. This is a wide gamut of, of everybody. I would say there's no, there's no different demographic than our overall company makeup going through this process. Okay. Yes, David. Ken, the data analytics piece that you've done on a mobile device, did you all develop that yourself? Did you go out of house to have it developed? 
couldn't have been more in the house. My brother has a uh, analytics company, and so uh, <laughs> <laughs> he, uh, is he going to be a really expensive? <laughs> well, but that, that is, you know, we'd be thrilled for him to speak with you. He can do that for you or anyone. Sure. Did, did you route that to a different domain? And if you did, if it was on a different domain, because you said you, you, you directed that traffic to a website, uh, how did you manage the, the branding on that separate domain? Well, the JB Advantage is the mobile tool for our associates, and it's a it's a password protected site. And it's not an app because we don't want to limit it to any particular type of phone. In fact, it works with over 600 different types of phones. So they, they have a uh, special URL that we give them. We teach them how to save it on their phone, and they they log in. Um, our website. And our mobile site, although two completely different experiences, are jordanbarris.com. If you go to a PC, it's one experience. You go to, from a mobile device, it's another. Questions back? I'm just going to use the mic for folks back here so you can hear them. Kevin, was, uh, whoa. <laughs> um, was that built, was that pr proprietary technology, or did you, was that system something that is off the shelf or and kind of customized? Um, all the content we developed ourselves, some of our tools we build in-house, some are through third parties and we customize. The intranet and that whole portal is all in-house that we built that. And what technology are you using? What, oh, pla what platform and what? Uh, I don't, I'd have to check with my folks on oh, the okay. back end if it's. I have a question. Uh, given all y'all's reduced budgets, where do you think the most uh, most important area of your company is to focus on with, with regard to new, new new programs and apps? Direct mail. <laughs> Besides that. <laughs> no, wait a second. I'll wasn't, tell you though, it wasn't a setup. The, the, tr the truth is, we really push, I'm, I'm, I'm not saying because I'm here, although probably I would because that's the way I'm wired. But the, the reality is we are really pushing our company to do more direct mail because other people are pulling back. And you know, five years ago, there'd be 20 pieces a day from realtors, and now there isn't. So this creates a great opportunity and to give a very unique message. So that is one thing we're pushing. But we are really um, you know, betting big on providing extreme hyper-local information, hyper-local teams, hyper-local team leaders. And that's what we're doing. Uh, we're having a big focus on not uh, relying so much on technology that you forget as a real estate agent you need to get a buyer in your car and get to know them as you're driving around to properties and get them in houses for sale and you need to get out there on listing appointments and get face to face belly to belly eyeball to eyeball with human beings as a listing agent if you have a showing on your properties certainly we can send out an email to get feedback but we're encouraging our agents that this uh, 2011 is a year a human to human contact and you need to follow up with that email and and talk to the the showing agent find out why didn't they like it and is there some little thing that can be done and it's going to be making deals because we're back as somebody said probably Marty back to the basics that it's really human to human contact and all of these things facilitate that but it's not uh, the be all and end all and direct mail <laughs> I would just add what ties into my, my little uh, this is not uh, presentation is um, uh, budget-wise, I think um, we're still you know, spending money on new, pro we're rolling out the Quickly program in two weeks in our company, but you have to evaluate what's working and not, not working and redirect dollars. Just like for us with staff, what wasn't working was having extra people out in the branch and pulling them back and giving them different roles to match their skill sets and, and re better, better being smarter about our dollars and how we use them. And also for the agents, you know, they're facing the same budget pressures. That's wh why we're doing what we're doing because if agents can use our systems, they don't have to go out and spend those dollars somewhere else. Um, and that really helps our bottom line. What they also say is, you know, take a look at the tools you have. If you're in a network, you're in an organization, see what they have available that you're not using and see if it's gonna be valuable for you. Or we, we have a launch uh, next Friday of a tool, Our World, from Leading RE, and that solves a, a, a gap that we have. And whatever you know, you're affiliated with, take advantage. Okay, I guess there is a question and I can't read it. I need my glasses. So Ken. Are you displaying any of the agent's stats on your web page? 
And if so, in what format? We're not displaying individual agent stats on the web page. Um, we're providing that for the agents to bring to an owner and also unique uh, stats is something that we've been talking about uh, that we'd like to be able to have direct mailed for the agents saying in this neighborhood, you know, I'm the 800 pound gorilla. Pam? I'm loving the uh, Zillow reviews um, because w we really made a massive push to get our agents to get reviewed by uh, their clients on Zillow. And they're taking a pretty good approach in that if it comes from your own PC, they're going to knock it out. And they, they, they actually review every review. And um, we're finding it's very effective because people are looking at them. At, at, they've been doing it for a month and we absolutely have a, can attribute listings to the reviews so you're not going to get away from it it's it's here to stay and it's going to be rampant so uh, uh, we, we're we're embracing it and we're trying to make sure that our agents get themselves reviewed in the most positive light I would just say, I think there's an opportunity to, to I, I do think they're gonna be here in one form or the other, because um, it's a consumer-driven thing. It's not up to us to decide. I do think there's a question of how can we use that information? So there's, to the consumer, can help them make a decision, but um, how can we help coach agents with that information if it's a good experience or a bad experience and those kind of things? And um, I think there's a value proposition there, uh, an opportunity as well. I think the uh, the youngest generation are used to rate my professor and things like that and deciding which classes they take based on how hot the professor is and how easy and whatever. So I, whether we, they do it, they have a hotness ratio on there. I've, I have a, a couple cousins who are biology professors and then a brother is a computer science professor. And the brother who's younger and more tech savvy, he's very concerned about his rating and he goes and he reads those reviews and tries to make himself better based on that. And he's got about a 4.5 on a five scale my other uh, uh, 60s era, uh, six, age 60 uh, biology professors, both of them are down in the below two, and they don't care. They think it's BS, and I don't care what those little brats think, <laughs> and they don't change their teaching style and whatever. So, um, and frankly, they're tenured, and they don't care at this point. So, oh, well, there you go. But, we don't have the luxury of tenure in our profession, so I think we do have to pay attention to it. And, and w I don't think there's been some talk, should we sponsor it, should we have it on our website? And I, I don't think that that's going to be viewed as valid by the people who, who go and read it. They want to go to a Rate My Professor kind of site or Zillow or whoever. So, How was that? Prior to rolling out any of these new technologies, how much pre-selling, or maybe, maybe that's a bad word, pre-education do you do to the agents to get them to understand why you're doing rather than just rolling something out and then not understanding or adopting yeah, What we do is we have something we call Tech Talk Tuesdays, where on Tuesdays we're just drilling in about technology and very specific one application or tool and really making it uh, sort of bite size. And every week they get used to it, so we really pick what they need to use and that's important. Uh, we like to roll things out with as much flash and uh, bang as we possibly can, but we're very conscious of the of the crawl, walk, run that you can't load them up too much because then they, their little heads explode and they melt down and that nothing happens and it doesn't get implemented. So we always start slow, but we start with a lot of flash. We sell the sizzle way before we even show them the steak, and then we, we spend a lot of time cutting the steak into little bite-sized pieces for them, and et cetera. We actually have a collaborative approach we take. So we don't view it as we kind of introduce it to them after the fact. We involve our managers and our agents way before. We have a marketing tech committee of agents that we meet every quarter and we review, kind of uh, uh, use them as a, a, a way to research new products and get their feedback on it. Um, we spend a lot of time with our managers before we roll anything out to get input. So, and when we roll out major things, we usually do, like with Quickly, we're doing a small control group first before we roll it out to everyone to make sure we've got it dialed in and get that messaging down, so. Yeah, when you roll out something, 
involving texting, you really have to be careful. Just think back to yesterday morning when we were all told how to be able to send this and people were supposed to text, uh, what was it, M1 to 59559 and half the group got left behind. And so you got to be really careful when you roll things out in a big group to roll out the sizzle and then get drilled down to the details on a one on one so people don't get left behind, feel stupid, then hate the technology and then you're done. All I can say to that is, OMG. <laughs> okay, I think we have run out of time. Uh, are there any, is there any one last question that has to be answered? Nope. Okay, well, I think we're going to wrap up. Eric Causeway is going to... All right, listen, uh, great big hand for these gentlemen up here and the information. Thank you.